Chapter 13 Light This video is brought to you by Ace with Dennis. Now, learning can be smart, not hard. Don't forget to subscribe and press the bell notification button to stop missing out free lessons from me. The nature of light. Light travels in straight lines. We use arrows to represent light rays in ray diagrams. The speed of light in vacuum is 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. Light moves slower in optically denser medium like air, glass, and water. Objects that produce light are luminous objects, for example, the sun, fire, and light bulb. Non-luminous objects reflect and absorb light from light source. For example, an object is seen to be blue because it reflects blue light and absorbs other colored lights. An object is seen to be white because it reflects all colored light. And an object is seen to be black because it absorbs all color light. When a ray of light hits the surface of non-luminous object, it will either be absorbed or reflected by the object. The normal is an imaginary line that is perpendicular to the surface. Angle of incidence, I, is the angle between incident ray and the normal. Angle of reflection is the angle between reflected ray and the normal. Now let's look at this diagram. This is the surface of reflection. This is the normal, which is perpendicular to the surface. And this is the incident ray. And this is the reflected ray. This is the incident angle. And this is the reflected angle. Laws of Reflection First law of reflection states that the incident ray, reflected ray, and the normal all lie in the same plane. So if you look at the diagram in 3D, this will be the normal, which is perpendicular to the surface. This is the incident ray, and this is the reflected ray. This is the incident angle and this is the reflected angle. All of them are lying on the same plane. Second law of reflection states that the angle of incidence I is equal to the angle of reflection R. So I equals to R. It doesn't matter how the condition of the surface Laws of reflection are always obeyed. For example, if this is the smooth face, there are many light rays shining onto the smooth surface. All of them will reflect according to law of reflection. Similarly, for convex surface, so this is the convex surface, it has a center point C. So if the ray shine at this direction, we need to draw a tangent before we can draw the normal which should pass through the center of the convex surface. Then we can draw the reflected ray. If the ray shines onto the convex through the normal, it will just return to the original path. Similar for this case, we need to draw a tangent and then we draw the normal before we can draw the reflected ray. For concave surface, so this is the center of the concave surface. When the ray is shown onto this surface, we need to draw the tangent then we draw the normal, then we draw the reflected ray. If it passes through the center and the normal, it will return at the same path. Similar for this case, when the ray shines through this direction, 
we need to draw a tangent, then the normal, which should pass through the center of the concave surface before we can draw the reflected ray. Reflection on mirror. So this is a plain mirror. How we want to complete the ray diagram? So this is the object. The distance between the object to the plane mirror should be equal to the distance from the plane mirror to the image. When we observe at this direction, we see that the image as if comes towards us. But actually, the ray comes from the object, touches the play mirror, then reflects towards the observer's eyes. So characteristics of image form on a play mirror is first, same size as the object. Second, virtual image. It cannot be projected on a screen. Third, upright. Fourth, at the same distance from the mirror as the object. Now, let's talk about refraction of light. When a ray of light travels from a transparent medium to another transparent medium at certain angle, part of the light is reflected at the boundary while the rest bends into the other medium. The bending of light is known as refraction of light. So this diagram illustrates the process of refraction of light. So this is medium 1 and this is medium 2. This ray of light is entering medium 2 at certain angle. It is incident ray. This is the normal which is perpendicular at the boundary. Some of the ray is reflected while some other ray bends into the medium two. And this ray is called refracted ray. This is the incident angle and this is the refracted angle. Laws of refraction. First law of refraction states that the incident ray, the normal and the refracted ray all lie in the same plane. Second law of refraction states that for two particular medium, the ratio of the sine of incident angle I to the sine of refracted angle R is a constant. So sine I over sine R equals constant. This is known as Snell's law. The refractive index of a medium is the ratio of speed of light in vacuum C to the speed of light in the medium V. The refractive index is also equal to the ratio of the sine of incident angle I to the sine of refracted angle R when the light travels from vacuum to a medium. Therefore, N equals C over V equals sine I over sine R. Refractive index has no unit. If a medium has higher refractive index, it is optically denser. Light travels faster in medium which is optically less denser and travels slower in medium which is optically denser. Due to the difference of the speed, light bends towards normal when it travels into optically denser medium and bends away from normal when it travels into optically less denser medium. Principle of reversibility states that a ray of light will take the same path if its direction of travel is reversed. So let's look at this diagram to illustrate this principle. So this is medium 1 and this is medium 2. This incident ray is entering from medium 1 to medium 2. So this is the normal, hence it will bend towards medium 2 as refracted ray. So this is I1 and this is R1. If we reverse the direction of the ray, now it becomes incident ray travels from medium 2 to medium 1. This is the normal. 
and the ray will bend away from the normal and it is refracted ray. This is I2 and this is R2. So based on principle of reversibility, I1 will be equals to R2 and R1 will be equals to I2. Let's look at some occurrences of refraction of light. A strong inner glass of water seems to bend. How does it work? So let's say there is a straw placed in a glass of water. So at this point, a ray of light travels from the water going out to the air. So this is the normal and it will bend away from normal. We take another ray of light at the same point and when you approach the normal, it will bend away from the normal as well. Hence, we observe from outside of the water, the straw seems to bend. Second occurrence is the underestimation of the depth of water. Let's say this is a pool. Below the pool, there is a fish and it is an object. So we take one point and a ray is coming out from the point. When it reach the surface, it will bend away from the normal. Another ray coming from the same point, reaching the surface, will do the same thing, which bends away from the normal. When the observer observes outside the water, the fish seems to be at shallower region. So this is the apparent depth and this is the actual depth. Total internal reflection. When light travels from a typically denser medium to optically less dense medium, the refracted light will bend away from normal. So let's look at this experiment. This is a glass block. So this is the center. When a ray of light entering from the end to the glass block towards the center, it will just travel through without any bending. So when you try to escape from the glass block to the end, it will bend away from the normal. So this is the incident angle I and this is the refracted angle R1. So if we increase the incident angle, the R will increase as well. So this is I2 and this is the corresponding R2. We continue to increase the incident angle, which is I3, and we'll get the even greater refracted angle, which is R3. So if we continue to increase the incident angle, there is a point where the refracted ray will travel along the surface. So this is I4 and the R4 is 90 degrees. So this incident angle will be equal to C where C is critical angle. Light travels from denser medium to less dense medium. Therefore, N equals sine R over sine C, sine I. When R equals to 90 degrees, I equals C. Therefore, N equals sine 90 over sine C. Since sine 90 degrees is 1, therefore N equals 1 over sine C. So this is the formula. If we continue to increase the incident angle, then we will find that there is total internal reflection where incident angle I5 is greater than critical angle, we will get total internal reflection. When total internal reflection happens, it follows laws of reflection. Applications of total internal reflection. The first one is binoculars. Binoculars uses 
through glass prisms with different critical angles to allow light to be internally reflected. Prisms bend light and help binoculars compact. Second application is prism. So this is the diagram of a simple prism. We have a tri triangular prism, prism 1. We have another triangular prism, which is prism 2. So let's say this is the object. The light of ray travels from this object towards prism 1. Then it will happen total internal reflection towards prism 2. When it is at prism 2, another total internal reflection happens and it will bend outside. So we can extend the borders like this and we can get the image from, from the object through prism 1. And image 1 becomes object for prism 2. Now, we continue to extend the boundary of prism 2 and we get another image from at this point with the distance from image 1 to the boundary of prism 2 equals the distance from the boundary at prism 2 to the image 2. Therefore, if we observe at this location, we can see image 2. So, you need to know how to draw this ray diagram. The third application of total internal reflection is optical fiber. Total internal reflection occurs in optical fibers. Optical fibers made up of a core of glass or plastic with high refractive index and coated with another material of lower refractive index. High refractive index require low crit lower critical angle. Hence, light is easily internally reflected at the boundary of the two materials. Let's look at this diagram. Inside is the core with high refractive index material. And this is this material is coated with low refractive index. When a light of ray enters the optical fiber and hit at the boundary, this is the normal and total internal reflection happens. Total internal reflection does not require large critical angle to happen in optical fiber. So, if it is a long optical fiber, then we can see that there are many occurrence of total internal reflection until the ray of light comes up from the optical fiber. The advantages of optical fibers are 1 low power loss and can tra transfer data for longer distance. 2. Higher bandwidth compared to copper cable, which means it can carry more data. 3. It does not affect by electromagnetic interference. 4. It is smaller size, lightweight and take less space compared to metal wires. 5. It is very difficult to tap. That means it has good security of data transfer. The disadvantages of optical fibers are 1. It is more difficult to install, hence it is expensive. 2. It is more fragile because it made from glass. 3. It requires special equipment, which means more expensive. To transfer data. 4. Light will be attenuated and dispersed when travel long distance. This causes data loss. Now, let's talk about thin lenses. There are two types of lenses, which is converging lens and diverging lens. For converging lens, when a beam of light passes through converging lens, the beam of light converges. So this diagram illustrates 
how it works. So this is the optical center C and this total line is the principal axis. When a beam of light travels through principal axis, there is no refraction, it will just pass through. And this is another beam of light. When passes when entering the lens, it will just converge into this path. Another beam of light, it will converge again, another beam of light, and another beam of light. So at the end, all the beam of light will converge at one point, and this point is called focal point. And this is the focal plane. The distance between the focal plane to the optical center is the focal length f. So if there's a beam of light travel again into the optical center, it will just pass through. Similar for this case. For diverging lens, when a beam of light passes through diverging lens, the beam of light diverges. So this diagram illustrates how it works. This total line is the principal axis and this point is the optical center C. So if a beam of light travels through principal axis to the optical center, it will just pass through in a straight line without any bending. This is another beam of light when enter the diverging lens, it will diverge. Similar for this case, this optical, this beam of light, when entering the diverging lens, it will diverge. Similar for this, it will diverge as well, and for this case, it will diverge h bar. So, when we extend the diverted ray of light with imaginary line, we will find that all of them will pass through one point, and this point is the focal point F of this diverging lens. So this is the focal plane, and the distance between the focal point to the optical center is the focal length F. Again similar with converging lens, when a ray of light travels into the optical center, it will just continue to travel in a straight line. Similar for this case, it will still travel in a straight line. Ray diagram of lenses. So we want to draw ray diagram. We need to draw at least two or three rays as shown below. An incident ray passes through optical center does not refract. So this is the converging lens and this is the object. This is the focal point and this is also another focal point. So we choose one point and we draw this incident ray which pass through the optical center and it does not reflect. Now we draw a second ray which is parallel to principal axis and is refracted to pass through the focal point. So this will be the second incident ray and it pass through the focal point. The third ray is an incident ray passes through the focal point is refracted so that it is parallel to the principal axis. So this is the incident ray that passes through focal point and after that it is parallel to the principal axis. So when you want to draw this ray diagram, you need to draw at least two rays. And this is the image form. Let's talk about images formed by thin converging lens. Thin lens formula is 1 over f equals 1 over u plus 1 over v, where f is the focal length, u is the distance from object to the lens, and v is the distance from image to the lens. When u is between 0 to less than f, so this is the ray diagram. So the object will be in between the focal point and 
the lens. So, firstly, we draw a beam of ray parallel to the principal axis. Then, it will be refracted passes through the focal point. The second ray will be passing through the optical center and it will just travel in a straight line. So, when you extend the ray with dotted line, and this is the observer's eye, we can form an image here. So, the V or the distance from image to the lens is less, is less than zero, which means image is behind the object, or we'll get a negative value. So, the characteristics of image is, first, it is virtual, second, it is upright, and third, it is magnified. The application for this is magnifying glasses. Now, if the u equals to f or the distance from the object to the lens is equal to the focal length, now let's draw the ray diagram. So this is the f, the focal point, and this is the another focal point then the object will be at this point. We'll draw two rays here. The first ray is parallel to the principal axis, and then it will bend towards the focal point. Another ray passes through the optical center, and we extend this ray. We find that the, the, the image is at infinity. So the characteristics of image is virtual, upright, and magnified. The application of this case is spotlight projecting a parallel beam. Let's draw the ray diagram for the case where U is between F and 2F. So now the object will be in between F and 2F. So the first beam that we need to draw is parallel to the principal axis and passes through the focal point. And the second beam of light will travel through the optical center and it will continue to travel in a straight line. Hence, an image is formed at the intersection point of these two lines. We find that the image is located greater than 2F and the image is at the opposite side of the lens. The characteristics of the image are real, inverted, and magnified. The application for this scenario will be the projector of an objective lens in microscope. The fourth case is when u is equal to 2f. So, the object will be located at 2F and we draw the first beam parallel to the principal axis and it will bend towards the focal point and then the second ray will pass through the optical center and continue to travel in a straight line. So, an image is formed at the intersection point of these two rays and we find that the, the image is at 2F where v equals 2f. So the image is at the opposite side of the lens. The characteristics of the image are real, inverted, and same size as the object. The application for this case is photocopier. Now, let's draw the ray diagram for u greater than 2f. So this is 2f and the object will be at this location. So the first ray will be a beam of light parallel to the principal axis and passes through the focal point. And the second ray of light will be passing through the optical center and continue to travel in a straight line. And we find that the intersection point of these two lights will form the image which is at this location. From here, we can observe that V is between F and 2F. 
Therefore, image is at opposite side of lens. The characteristics of image form are real, inverted, and diminish. The application for this case are a camera and human eye. Now, let's talk about when the object is at infinity. So, this is the ray diagram. When the object is at infinity, the beam of light will pass through the, the optical center and it will continue to travel in a straight line. And second beam of light will first pass through the focal point and entering the thin lens. After that, it will bend and travel parallel to the principal axis. The intersection point of these two rays will form the image and we find that V equals to F. From here, we can say that image is at opposite side of the lens and the characteristics of image are real, inverted and diminished. The application for this case is the optical lens of telescope. Real image is image that can be projected on screen. Magnification M is the ratio of image height HI to object height HO. Therefore, the formula for magnification M is equal HI over HO. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Do you have any question or doubts to ask? Feel free to write down in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Do you like this video? Please don't forget to like it and share it. Alternatively, you can also enroll this full revision course at Udemy. At Udemy, you can track your learning more effectively. Download my notes in printable PDF form. Take a summative quiz at the end of each chapter. Get your first-hand updated contents from me. Get quicker response from me and many more. You can get all these benefits at a very affordable price. It is one-time payment, no recurring fees, no hidden costs. This saves you thousands of dollars on expensive tuition fees and revision crash courses. And most importantly, your precious time. Finally, you can do your revision anytime you like, anywhere you prefer. All is available within your fingertips. Check out the description below this video and click on the enrollment link to register the course at discounted price. Alright, until then, see you in the next video. Have a great day ahead.